Yay, we're live. Welcome to Sean Malone, CSO of Sales Ascenders, co-founder and CSO at Sales Ascenders. Sean, I'm going to let Sean explain exactly what that is and um, what Sean does amazingly. But just before going live, because I don't have so much background on Sean, I just, but I have a good feeling about Sean. And Maya Angelou said that you can forget how what people said, you can forget what people did, but you will never forget how they made you feel. And I had a call with Sean and Sean made me feel really good and really supported and I found him incredible. And I thought this is somebody that I would love to follow, which I have been and to share with my audience. I'm thrilled that you're here, Sean. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. Well, Neve, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to come speak uh, here with you and, and hopefully shower your audience with a bunch of great value that they, they want to learn about. So I'm um, really excited. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Great, 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 great. And like I said, I love to just have an organic conversation, see where it goes. I'm, I'm so curious because you have, and what the title I put was how to make a million in 10 months because you did it. Yeah, yeah. So and I don't know how you did it, but I'm really excited <laughs> to find out. But yeah, I'll just, I'll just start telling my story and, and just kind of interrupt me as we go. And, and I so think a lot of people will be able to relate to, to kind of like my journey. So um, I came out of college about 20 years ago, just over 20 years ago. And uh, like most kids, I wanted to make a lot of money. So that was the question that I started with. And I called my dad because he was the one guy that I look up to and I at the time. And, and I said, hey, dad, how do I make a lot of money? <laughs> and uh, so he goes, well, you, you got a choice. And I was so excited because I was like, I was nervous, but I was like, yo, like, you're just going to tell me the answer. And he's like, there's three things. He goes, Sean, number one, are you, are you a CEO? And I was at the time, I was like 21, 22 years old. And I was like, no, I don't know anything about being a CEO. So no, that's not me. He's like, okay, no problem. That one's out. He goes, are you an entertainer? Never don't know how to sing or dance or rap or any of that, play instruments. Or anything. So I was like, nope, that's not me either. And he says, okay, Sean, well, you need to go and learn sales. Great. So now I know what I got to go do. So Can I, went I ask after, a question already? <laughs> oh, yeah, please jump in. Yeah. I'm curious. Is your dad, do you know the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? I'm curious if you went to your dad, was he a mentor you trusted? Was he somebody that already had made a lot of money? Was he the rich dad and the rich dad, poor dad? Or? Oh, great, great question. And he was a hybrid model, I guess what I would say there, right? So um, he was a small business owner. Uh, we moved to the United States. Uh, when when I was really young, uh, he came. My whole, my whole family is originated in South Africa. Wow! Uh, I mean, so my entire family, except for my sister and my parents, still live in South Africa. Um, Interesting. We, yeah, There's some Irish in there too, with that name. Yeah. So uh, the Irish parts from my dad's side, and then the South African part or the Dutch parts from my mom's side, I guess. And so we ended up moving to um, Colorado, and and uh, growing up being kind of a foreigner, I guess I would say. Uh, it was a little bit different when you're a kid. I mean, you get picked on because you talk funny. I had a little bit of an accent back then and I've lost right. it since then, right? Um, but yeah, so so growing up, um, I watched my dad. Uh, he was very studious. He started kind of as the poor dad in the book. Um, he mm -hmm. became a engineer and he actually became a metallurgist where he became very good with metals. Right. And so um, that was his poor dad kind of education and training and we were in South Africa and uh, because of political and military stuff we ended up moving to the United States because my dad was like I don't want to be in this country anymore so we ended up in in America uh, right. th thankfully and grateful uh, for yeah. it and so growing up like my dad said oh goodness like they don't understand how I talk they don't understand how the business was done over there so like I need to adapt and then that was his kind of like education transformation into the rich dad side and he's like I understand I need to be an entrepreneur can't be a solopreneur. I can't even, I need to be either investor or business owner, like on the, I guess would be on the right side of, of that chart that they have in the book. And yeah. so he uh, started his own cookware import export business. And uh, mm -hmm. I ended up starting working for him when I was like six or seven, just pushing a broom in his shop. Wow. And I, I watched him build uh, uh, this business into a multi-million dollar business before even the internet was around. That's so. amazing. This kind of, this reminds me of Gary Vaynerchuk slightly. It's kind of got that element to it. Immigrants yeah. and uh, he helped his dad and yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just I, that's I mean like the one thing I, I'm so grateful for that experience 
people are like, whoa, they, he put you to work at six, seven years. Yeah, he did. Right. And it was because it was like, we, that's all we needed to do to do. And so I learned work ethic. Um, right. and I don't think, I don't think a lot of people really went through an experience or maybe I'm hoping a lot of people go through that experience and learn that work ethic. Like you just got to grind through, like times are going to be good. Times are going to be bad. Like they're always ups and downs. Right expect that and just continue going on the path and to continue going towards Holding the goal. Your vision strong. Yeah. Actually yesterday I heard something that was really interesting is um, it, it kind of relates to that is like the people that have had the most success in the online game are those people that just disregard what everyone else thinks because they have a vision and they right. just truck at that vision. And literally they'll say they'll test something that might not work and they're going to get backlash, but they're like, fine, I don't care. I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm just going to tweak it and just keep going down this path until yeah. I get it right. Absolutely. And then, yeah. So I, th th that was, that was pretty valuable. Is that kind of, uh, yeah. So now we caught up now we're good. Totally. We're good. You can continue with your story. I was curious Perfect. about you for all this background. And so it was definitely like good advice. So he told you go read books. Yeah, yeah. Well, he said get a sales job, and so oh, I no, no, get, get sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so I went and I, I picked up a sales job, and I sucked. I was so bad. I was terrible, terrible, terrible. I was just trying to do everything I could. To, hey, let me come over and show you this stuff. You got to buy this stuff, and like I, it was like the worst, worst ever. And uh, for weeks, I did this, and literally, it was forty to eighty cold calls every single day with zero to show for it, nothing on my calendar, nothing like it was just a mess. And I was heartbroken because I was like, man, every time I had been part of a sports team growing up, I'd always been kind of in the upper half of those Achieving. Teams. Yeah. And so when I got into sales, it was like this massive frustration of, oh, like I really am not good at this and it really hurts my feelings and it hurts my ego and it's just right. like, what the hell. Yeah, and I yeah. think people going in that direction when they start looking at sales they feel those things and they're just just like oh that seems like a lot of rejection that i don't want to have to go through so i'm not going to do it right however i was determined to win because that was kind of that move of i i needed to learn how to master this thing my boss came here here's the catalyst right my boss comes to me and he says sean you have gotten zero results over the past like four or six weeks you need to figure this out otherwise i'm gonna have to fire you and i was like ah, oh, i don't want to be fired so i go home and i call my dad and i'm like this guy's gonna fire me what do i do and he says Go to the library and read right. the book. All right. I do recall you saying something about reading so, books. <laughs> yeah. So a very profound advice, simple. And I went to the library and I picked up a Tom Hopkins book. I started reading it and stuff I found in there was super profound. And I was like, I've never heard this before. Tom Hopkins. I don't know him. What has he written? Yeah. So he wrote How to Master the Art of Selling was his very first book that I got. And then he's written, uh, I think he's written like 20 books on okay. sales and sales strategies. Wow. He's, he's coached over 5 million sales professionals. Um, he's one of those guys. He's just, he's like a, a dinosaur in the industry, but he's been relevant right. the entire time he's been around. I know him personally. He's an amazing, I had the chance to have lunch with him. Wow. Um, he's an amazing person and he truly has mastered because sales is an art and a science. Like that's really- It is an art. I was just listening to your live stream in your Facebook group and I, I commented on it. I said, it's such an art, right? It's yeah. an art that you can learn. Yeah, and, and that's, you just said it, right? That's the secret. People are like, oh, these people are naturally good at sales. No, nobody is naturally good at sales. I don't care who you are. You might be born with a little bit of ability to connect with people, but that's you're not good at sales. Art. Yeah, you're not good at sales. Sales is a thing you need to learn. It has a structure mm -hmm. that sits behind it. And then when you have that structure in place, you start to add your personality and your flair and that's where the art comes in. So like that's right. that's kind of what I learned over, over this whole journey. And so I go back to the office and I pick up my phone for on Monday morning and after I read this book and I got on the phone with this prospect and I literally said a couple of things that I learned from the book and I set an appointment. And at that moment in my life, I was like, whoa, this is a science. Like you can learn this. Yeah. And that feeling of just like, holy cow, it worked, like rushed over my body. And it was this big adrenaline push. And that moment in my life really changed the perspective and the direction that I wanted to go. Um, because yeah. I was aware that I'd watched my dad build his businesses and everything. I was like, you got to be able to communicate with people. So I, at that moment in my life, I was like, I'm going to master this. I don't know how. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm going all in. And right. so that's when I, 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 I immersed myself into every sales book I could find, learning all these different sales trainers, what they do. I stumbled into things called selling systems. I didn't even know their selling systems were a thing. Wow. Um, there's a bunch of different systems out there for selling. 
a lot right. of them have great things. A lot of them have kind of like, I mean, like weird parts that it, but they yeah. all work in yeah. one way or another. Can you name a few, Sean? I tipped in. Is spin selling with that be one system? Yeah. Yep. That's a very basic, easy intro one that, that a lot of people start right. with. And, right. I have um, the book. I, yeah. I read the book too. Right. So uh, that this is a really good one. Um, and it depends on, it depends on the type of sale that you're working to make. Mm -hmm. If it's, uh, and again, it goes into a big definition here is like sales cycle versus sales process, right? So sales okay. cycle is the time it takes the days or, or weeks or months or whatever that it takes from the initial, uh, opportunity or the initial contact until they start your program product okay. service or whatever. Right. That's and your you have touches, cycle. right? Isn't that, that's another yeah. term I learned. Like, yeah. yeah so we... your cycle is the, the amount of days or time it takes to go from zero to new process or new client. Right. And then your process is all of the different touch points within the, the, the cycle that you're using. So if it, it, you know, people hear this one call close or two call closes, like that means there's just two conversations in the entire process is, is kind of how that works. Within yeah. the conversations, again, there's even a microstructure that should be followed for everything. So again, it's really scientific, yeah. but as you start to learn these pieces and you're like, oh, okay, so like, these are my touches, this is how it works. This, you know, experts and, and psychologists have proven over and over again that it takes seven to 12 touches to lower, lower barriers of resistance and increase barriers of, of trust and likability. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. I mean, I have resistance to like, repeatedly promoting stuff but i'm also aware that people don't pay attention until they've seen it at least seven times so yeah and actually i was even i mean i i read every single day still reading sales books reading copy yes. like learning learning i'm it's eternal student of communications yeah. and um even this morning it was talking about that exact statistic and they were saying um a lot of people got it wrong they're like no you have to present your sales message six times before people even digest it and you're like oh that's even more different it's not just touches oh. of like having conversations it's like here's the sales thing here's the sales thing like right. six times that gets a little overwhelming right so yeah um, but it's yeah, just it a lot of fear i mean for me personally it's like oh yeah i don't want to sound like a broken record and <laughs> yeah, but, but 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 okay so so like russell brunson one of my direct coaches taught me he said um, keep sharing your message even when you get sick of it, because by the time you get sick of it is the time that people are starting to pay attention to it. Wow. That's really interesting. That's yeah. a great tip. Yeah. And so oh, I was like, wow, I'm not sick of sharing my message. Okay. I'll get to that point. <laughs> yeah. So get sick of your story and saying your message over and over. When you get internally, you're just like, ah, oh, I've said it so many times. Guess what? You're gonna keep saying it because when you do, that's when people start to recognize it. Wow. That's when you start to get your chops. Like people say, Russell always told me, he's like, publish, 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 publish. It's one of the first ways to generate, you know, opportunity and exposure. Right. And he said it takes 30 to 40 lives before you get your chops and you'll be able to actually get on a camera and talk. And then right. it's like now you've got your chops. Now we have to integrate the message. So it's just repetition, right? Tom Hopkins again, he's he always one thing I remember from him, you know, he's like repetition is the mother of all learning. What does that mean? Do the same thing a couple of times over and over until you get it to a flow and you just know how it works, right? Right. And that it totally applies to sales, it totally applies to just about anything that's out there, sports or any other. Yeah, analogy. yeah, it's like the 10,000, uh, the mastery, you have to do it 10,000 times. Hours, yeah, they say 10,000 hours, right? To be, hours, yeah. Okay, yeah, so. Um, yeah, so so um, kind of back to where I was at. So, so I, I just set this appointment. And I was like, I'm going to master this. And I dove deep. And, and uh, now we can fast forward quite a bit because I learned a bunch, started using some of the stuff I'd learned. I learned these systems. I kind of like duct tape one together that would work for me. Right. And had some results, enough results to earn a lot of cash to end up investing into my own business. I always wanted to be a business owner because I watched my dad doing that. Right. And, and the rich dad, poor dad thing is like, hey, do you are you a solopreneur like a dentist where you if you're not doing work on someone's teeth, you're not getting paid? Or do you have a business with systems that run and you can actually earn income from it? So it's like, no, I, I want to be in that column. Mm -hmm. I want to be an investor, which is the next stage after a business owner. And so mm -hmm. I ended up buying my own electronics company. Uh, I bought 47% of it. I moved to Las Vegas, early 2000s. And I started with seven employees and a partner. Um, and over the following four years, we grew it from seven to 110 people that were working directly for us. Wow. And uh, I built a sales infrastructure uh, across the nation. So I had 1,027 salespeople selling in every state for me and reporting back to me. So it was like- Where are you selling, Sean? 
Uh, so they were selling electronic components. So okay. if you had like a cell phone, think about like the cell phone inside here, there's a mm -hmm. bunch of electronic components like okay. circuit boards and all that other stuff. So my company, what it did was it actually manufactured pre-printed circuit board assemblies and put all the parts on it and made sure that it worked, tested okay. it, put it into the phone and then shipped it to somebody. That's kind of right. what we did. And so my clients were people like Raytheon's and Lockheed Martin's and Boeing okay. and all these big companies where okay. we would build like a lot of the military packs for people that went out in the field and had the communications devices. We would build all that stuff for them. So it was a really cool opportunity. Um, we worked okay. on like laser guidance systems and telemetry and like all this really cool stuff that I know nothing about, but I had a bunch of engineers that were 10 times smarter than me that could figure all of it out, which was cool to just be part of the ride, right? My job yeah. was kick down the door and get the right people in the room and right. then bring in the experts. And, and that was literally the kind of the big ticket sell stuff that I did um, working on big deals. I, I started closing in that area in my life. It was like the majority of the contracts that I would close would be multi-year, multi-millions, multi, like, I don't know, the biggest one I ever was a part of closing was a $60 million deal over five years. Uh, the personal biggest deal I ever closed was a $1.2 million deal with just me selling, <clears throat> selling to a boardroom of the right people. So, wow, that felt yeah. good. so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was like, and then, and then I got to a place in my career, um, we can talk about later, but I actually used to coach people on how to close million dollar deals, which was awesome. Um, but my company, um, was doing great and I was actually in California and this is kind of where I hit the wall, right? Like, uh, all of a sudden, uh, I get a call from my partner and he says, yo, come home quickly because we have an emergency. And I was like, what happened? I go home, I walk into my office and there is a group of people sitting there. And my business partner looks at me and he says right in front of them, uh, no warning. Hey, I decided to sell the company. I've already sold it to them. It's all done deal. You're part of the package. I was wow. like, wait a, minute, wait a minute. Like I own 47% of this and you never even discussed it with me. Uh, is that legal? He could, he could legally do that? I only own 47%. It's not a majority. Wow. So I was like, are you kidding me? This just happened. And this was after four years of blood, sweat, labor, tears, like, yeah, devastation. So it put me in a dark place. I, I was really pissed. There was anger. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. Because I literally thought this was yeah. pre internet days too. So it was like, it was all, I mean, it was, it wasn't pre-internet days, but it was, it was like early mid two thousands. And, uh, yeah, it just put me in a bad place. And yeah. I, I started drinking a lot. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Obviously I had made a little bit of money from the sale of the business because I had 47% ownership. And right. um, I was like, what am I gonna do? Like, I'm just not gonna do anything is what I thought. And so I started, started drinking a lot. And um, that was kind of at the time where I met my wife. Um, <laughs> fortunately for me, uh, she was kind of like that ray of sunshine. She kind of pulled me out of the drinking and said, yeah. go do something with your life. And so at that stage I was like, okay, well, man, that was a really big down. I learned a lot of lessons. I was really upset with all of this. Like, what can I take away from it? And then I kind of pick myself back up. And I believe one of the best characteristics of, um, you know, in, in sales, like there's someone who's always asked me is like, Sean, what are the characteristics of the best salespeople that you, you teach and coach? And I said, there's three of them, right? So conviction, you have to have conviction in what you sell. Meaning if you're not convicted yes. in the thing that you're like, that's why I love sales. Yeah. I'm so convicted that sales is the number one skill that every single person needs to learn, no matter mm -hmm. if they're in business or not. I know, I tell my kids, I tell my kids. Yeah, yeah I want them to learn sales. <laughs> every conversation is a selling conversation. Mm -hmm. It's the oldest profession. It's even older than what they say, prostitution being the oldest one. No, sales wow. was yeah. pretty- yeah. Well, kids that. are selling, right? As soon as they can talk, they want cookies. They're, they're selling. <laughs> right. All right. And so conviction is the first piece. The second piece is you got to have persistence, right? No matter what, like whatever brick wall gets thrown in your way, you got to get up and keep going up or around over. Yeah, that's the tough part. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm at. So like in my journey, this is where I started to learn per persistence. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then the last one is consistence. It's like consistency. Yeah, so persistence and consistence and conviction are the three right. things that if, if you bucketed those into one person as a sales professional, that, that person will succeed. Like that's wow. the main ingredient. I've heard that before, but it Very makes true. sense. Yeah. yeah. And so, so I hit this wall and I'm, uh, my wife's like, yo, go do something different with your life. I ended up taking a job selling roofing material. Um, and, uh, just of all things. So I was located in Nevada. I was selling for a company that was based in Ohio and my territory was Nevada. And, um, I started breaking a few sales records and doing really well. 
And during that time, I got a chance to integrate myself with the roofing world and those contractors. And I realized that like some of they, they like to cut corners, they like to move fast. And some of the stuff they do is a little bit on the wrong side of the ethics line. And for that reason, I said to myself and my wife and I agreed, like, I can sell about anything. So like, I don't want to be part of this world. So I left. And um, so they were they were they were furious because I was like doing really well. I was actually at the place where I was training some of the other new people that were coming in the organization. I was like, no, thanks. Uh, it's not for me. And right at that time, it was about four and a half, five years ago, my wife saw a Facebook ad. And the Facebook ad was this young kid walking down the beach uh, talking about how he made all this money online. And that's all, that's it, yeah, right? it's one of those. Right. And so. Uh, but it was a little bit different. Like there's some things, it was a longer video. So it was like, okay, that's interesting. So we listened to the whole thing and we went down the rabbit hole a little bit, ended up investing into the thing. Um, and we got involved in this uh, network marketing program that so sells um, uh, medical grade water systems for home use. Okay. Okay. And I love the product, kind of a biohacker as a geek kind of guy. I love to understand like how to live forever is, is obviously. Totally. What's, it, yeah. Bulletproof. What's his name? He's the most famous. Dave Asprey. He's one yes. of them, right? Yeah. So yeah, he's got a lot of good books out there. He's a good ones. So there's a lot of biohackers out there for sure. Um, and uh, so, so at that stage, um, we go down this path. We ended up investing over 10 grand into this product. So we had it for ourselves. And then we got this little like kind of duct taped marketing system that was put together. And so I looked at kind of the bones or the structure and I was like, okay, so like we could work on this. I don't know this part of marketing. I don't even know what that means really. I know sales. So I know that this product is valuable and I know it can serve people at a very high level. I have conviction again about this product and yeah. I'm hundred percent that if this gets into the right people's hands, it's going to benefit them in a major way for health. So I became very convicted about that product. And then I used all the skills that I had built so far and built this massive sales organization behind the front end, like online marketing piece. Cause I didn't know that part yet. So we're going through this process, learning all of this stuff. And we ended up having just this windfall of like massive success. Um, we yeah. grew our, yeah. So we grew our organization very quickly. Um, what's the, what's the, can I ask the name of it? The, you said yeah. the yeah, eNagic. It's like magic with an E on the front. eNagic. Oh, okay. It's not the, there's another one called, is it Kengen or Kengen? That's apparently. Uh, so, Enagic manufactures Kengen systems. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. Wow. That's the company I wear. I love that company. They're really, really strong at the leadership level. Like, I did a lot of research on them. Um, yeah, great, great, great organization. And, um, so anyway, so so we built this downline of like 2,500 people that have all invested into this big project product and we're doing great. Uh, and we had built this list of like 300,000 people and wow. all, like, so pretty, you know, like micro influencer style. A lot of people would be like, oh, I made it. No, no. Like we're just little micro influencers at that time, um, but we were doing well. We were living a lifestyle. We, we were on tour with Digital Nomad Life, like we're went all over the world. We hit a bunch of countries. Like it was amazing. Right. Awesome. And, and so that was a really great part of our life. But, um, all of a sudden there was this external pressure from our organization that came back to us and they're like, your software sucks. You need a new one is what they said. And I was like, Oh man. So, um, we had been inside of Russell's world now for about a year and a half. And we're like, Oh man, we got invited to become part of his inner circle because we were showing some success and we were doing mm -hmm. some things. And uh, through that network, we were able to meet uh, some people in the software world that helped us build our own software company. And so uh, we ended up building our own software company and that's what we got that that award for over there. Yeah, are you able to remove commas. it and show it on the camera or? Yeah, so it's right there, yeah. So it's just uh, two commas for anyone that doesn't know. Um, if you process $1 million in revenue through a sales funnel built in ClickFunnels software, uh, it, within a calendar year, so 12 months, uh, you would win the two comma club award. Oh, it has to be within a calendar year. The two comma club, yes. Uh, the 10 X where you do $10 million does not have to be in a calendar year. It's over right. the lifetime of the company. Um, and so, um, so, so we did, um, from, from our launch of our own software platform, because we had a little bit of an audience, uh, and we had all these people that hated what we were currently using. Uh, we built our own and moved everybody in there. And now we had a full-time software business that we're running and we knew really nothing about software. So if you think about that for a second, like put yourself in those, those shoes, it's like you're running a full-time software business and over here, you're still a micro influencer with hundreds of thousands of people's eyeballs on you every day. 
it gets hectic. Like the time of day runs out very quickly. Mm -hmm. You find yourself working 16 to 18 hours a day. Here's where Sean ends up crash and burn in burnout alley. And I'm like, Oh my God, to the point, to the point Neve, where I was driving down the highway one day and I saw a big tree and I thought, what would happen if I did that? Wow. It was such a dark, it was such a dark place. Um, I hate burnout alley. Uh, I'm so wow. thankful for in that period of my life, Melissa and I decided like, Hey, we need to get some coaches. And so um, we found two coaches uh, and, and I'm so thankful for these people in my life. Alex Sharfin is number one. He's amazing. Yeah. He, we joined his high highest program and went through the whole thing with him. He literally gave me time back and he started my recovery of getting out of burnout alley. It's a bad place to be. And I feel so bad for anyone that's there because I've been there for a long time. And yeah. it's like, the other person. I'm just curious, Sean, can I ask, is it like this just deep internal drive that, you know, to succeed or, you know, why did you? allow that to happen? Um, first of all, I hate corporate America. I will slit my throat before I go back to a nine to five job. I will never work for anybody else simply because I don't believe that another adult should tell me when I should eat or when I should go to the bathroom, personal belief. Um, and so when, when it comes to why I was so adamant about just doing my own thing and building my own business is because I hated the nine to five and I never wanted to go back and I would do anything at all costs to never go back. Now, some people are like, no, I just want to be the dominant and win the game at the highest level. Other people like, you know, two things, right? What's the motivator? There's this thing called the action threshold. The action threshold is where uh, there's somebody that will actually take an action or move over the threshold of, of moving in a direction they want to go. So, so in my world, like, you can become that person that wants to just dominate and win that will cause somebody to move over the action threshold. That's usually going towards pleasure. Mm -hmm. The bigger motivator in sales and anything else in life is moving away from pain. So for me in my world, I would have preferred burnout alley than going back to a nine to five. Right. So I'm running, uh, running away from that fear. And this is the place I ended up because I took on too much stuff onto my plate. Interesting. Okay, so it's a different. You ended up in a different kind of pain. You were running away from the pain of nine to five, and yeah. okay. Yep. okay. And so that that's you asked like the internal motivator of like why yeah. I went the way I did. Like that's why because I never right. and still to this day I will never go back. Never yeah. ever go back to nine to so five. So you're just really determined to make it work very well, but you also had high standards, I guess, because you probably could have chipped oh. away and you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I wanted to provide a really nice life for me and my wife and our cats and and just be able to do what we wanted to when we wanted to do it, travel around the world, like do the, the stuff that everybody talks about, right? Like that stuff is important. But the right. things that yeah, so 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 um uh, yeah, so so I'm in Burnout Alley. I hire Alex Sharfin, or we hired Alex Sharfin. He helps us systemize our software company and our business, and gave us like 20 hours a week back into our world. That's well, a lot amazing. of time, right? Like crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of time. Uh, highly recommend anyone follow that guy just to learn this. System. Yeah, he's great. He's another real authentic guy. Yeah. yeah, and and he introduced me to the the other guy that really saved me in my life was Dr. Dave Heitman, um, who is a um, he's a one of the most amazingly accomplished. Um, he is a professional chiropractor. He's like, he was the medical director of all these massive sports teams and all this like big level kind of guy. And so he helped me with like my routine and my diet and my and changing a lot of that stuff to give me more energy as an entrepreneur. Cause a lot oh, of people- so important, right? That's yeah. interesting, hype man. I haven't heard, how do you spell that? Hi like um, hype? H yeah, it's H-E-I-T-M-A-N-N, -N, Dr. Dave. I'll, I'll connect you in a message with okay, him. Okay, awesome, wow, that's he's awesome. He's got a really, uh, he's got such a unique program that he's working on. You know about the aura rings or the whoop bands or the tracking, again- Yeah, I mean, vaguely, vaguely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what he, so these are great because they give you data. Problem is if you don't have a medical degree, you can't really interpret the data. So Dave is actually building a program right now that it, it's a community, it's a, it's a, it's a network that he's making um, about how to interpret this data, working on some software and some other really cool things. Um, I would encourage anybody that is in that place that needs to get their routines right and their life right and their fitness good yeah. and all that stuff. No, like, I'm, I'm very, I value that highly. Yeah, we need yeah. the energy to make it happen, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, so, so now we're running a software company. We got some systems back. Alex is there. And, and we're still trying to do the micro influencer lifestyle, like still being influenced, like still working like crazy. 
course, we're in the inner circle at this time and we're doing these presentations twice a year. And Russell says to us after our last presentation, we kind of just walked everybody through our ups and downs. There was literally tears in the room and then everyone's cheering for us. And then there's more tears. It was like, it was such an emotional ride. Okay. And at the end, Russell stands up and he says probably the, the most shockingly scary and profound thing at the same time. He goes, Sean, you need to kill your baby. You need to sell your company. You need to get out of that. You're not doing the right thing. And, and, to hear that in front of all those super high level people, I'm just like, what does this mean? Like he's telling me to end my company that's done millions. Of so we did a million dollars in just over 10 months with a $99 a month offer. Very that's difficult. Incredible. Wow. And wow. then the systems on the back end, we ended up selling over $12 million worth of those systems. Wow. What, what did you use Face it for traffic? Facebook ads or Google yeah. ads? Or? So, yeah, so that's the beauty of it. When we started online, um, and this is literally, if, if you've ever read this book, the Traffic Secrets book. The yeah, very last, I have. I have them all here. <laughs> so the very, yeah, the very last chapter of Traffic Secrets talks about Russell saying, yeah. So he says um, in that book, he says, uh, we learned paid advertising to cold traffic. And in that book, he says, that's the very last thing that right. anyone should ever do. Totally, yes. So, so we, were, we were opposite, we were backwards. Zero so our, relationship build. Yeah, so it's crazy. So our software started with paid ad to cold traffic, and then it went into our system of, of um, some, some contact through Messenger into our software platform. And our software platform really did kind of three things. Uh, the first thing that it did was it gives you the training on Facebook advertising. Second thing that it did was gave five done for you optimized funnels that you could use at any one time. And then the third thing it did because of our sales background that we had and everything we put into this, um, we assembled a webinar team. We assembled a sales team that literally when the newest user came in as an affiliate, all they had to do was go through the Facebook training and start running paid ads to cold traffic driving them into our system, which was then a webinar was done for them, a call was taken for them, yeah. a deal was put together. As soon as an investment was made, that affiliate would earn the commission off the sale of the unit. Plus they would make an affiliate That's amount. From... So yeah, so that was our software company. So you're a real systems expert, I would say, it sounds like. No, 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 no. no. I, <laughs> when we started, we had, we had duct tape. That's how we put everything together. Wow, and wow. then we learned a tool and like, oh, that tool would be great. And we put it in and then another one and another one and another. And eventually we, we got, I was like, okay, this is kind of how this works. Cool. This is all working. Now that was kind of the first piece. And then as we built our own software company, we got a little bit more robust and, and combined some things. But uh, we're standing on the stage at Inner Circle and Russell says, kill your baby. And we're like, what does that mean? And he goes, no, get out of that company. He's like, your life is miserable. And I just I had like another epiphany moment. I'm like, oh my God, you're totally right. Like, and he said, here's what's happening. He goes, you guys are like level 10 kind of marketing people now because you've learned this stuff over the last however many years. You already knew yeah. sales really good. He's like, so you're level 10, but you're in a level two opportunity and you're only going to be hitting the limit and it's going to frustrate you. You're totally right. Serving the wrong person. Amazing. And so that, that day I learned my lesson of like only serve the people that you truly want to work with. That's it. Super, super valuable, right? Uh, so because you really care about your target market and really. Yeah, I don't think people pay enough attention to that, actually. Yeah, no, I'm, that's something I'm recently only really getting on a deeper level. The importance, yeah, speaking to the right, sure. the right audience, yeah. And then, you know, that's why I rally around prospecting. Like, the, it's the lost art of prospecting and sales. Here's here's what happened. Uh, in let me just finish my story real quick, and I'll get into yes. that. I think that's really valuable. So. Um, we're on the stage and Russell says, kill your baby. And so they're like, okay, how do we do this? And we ended up taking a year to figure out how to sell the company. We ended up selling the software company to one of our competitors, which was great. Uh, and during that time, Alex Sharfin came back in the picture and we asked him, we're like, coach, what do we do? Like how, how in the heck, what, what should we do here? Cause like, this is, we don't really have a backup plan. He goes, what are you guys good at? And we said, well, sales, that's where we started. That's the, the backbone of everything. That's always helped every single business we've ever done to grow and be successful. Right. And he says, guess what? All these online entrepreneurs suck at sales. I was like, what? Are you serious? Like, I didn't believe that because you see all these people getting massive success and all these awards. And you're like, they're genius. They get all this results. And so he's like, no, no, no. Listen, you just go talk to them. And so this is really the first step. If you're just in that place where you're starting to learn 
who you need to sell to. Again, like defining your avatar, right? Mm -hmm. The secret is, is there's a little exercise that Chris and I share is called the pain drain gain exercise. So how it works is like go and speak with 40 or 50 or 100 people that you believe would be perfect people to work with mm -hmm. and ask them every question you could possibly ask them and not try to sell them one thing. Right. So what you'll find from doing this in a certain area. So we went into this online entrepreneur's world and we said, hey, we want to just have a general sales conversation. Uh, we're thinking about building this thing. Can we just ask you if this would be even of interest to you. And mm -hmm. so we did in these conversations about we did about 40 of them. Yeah. And um, every single one of them had a sales problem. I was like, are you kidding? This is insane. And so um, at that stage, there was five of these 40 people that came back to us and say, look, dude, I don't care. You guys ask more questions about things that we've never been asked before. Like we want to work with you. How do we do it? And we started, we ended up picking up five, five clients out of mm -hmm. the 40. And it was just a byproduct. Like we just your market research. That was all just a byproduct of marketing research formed a consulting company for us. And that became our high ticket sales consulting agency in which we serve some of the biggest and best online entrepreneurs on how to hire, onboard and train sales teams, um, putting in the sales infrastructure, the ecosystem, if you will, and then helping them to hold them accountable, coach them, help them to advance and, and grow other businesses. And so we've been lucky to have a hundred percent success rate with all of our high ticket clients, which is fantastic. Right. Um, but again, it goes back that 20 years to here's the principles. Like we just lay the principles out and we, we share that with them. During that journey, we learned something really fascinating. It wasn't so much that these online entrepreneurs had a problem with converting people into their programs, but it was more so that they had kind of a little bit of a lack of confidence and they didn't know how or where to start. Yeah. Their, their yes, biggest, right. Yeah. Yes, the right. biggest. Yeah, exactly. The biggest challenge that we found out this whole thing was literally they didn't understand prospecting. And, and so as we, as, as I kind of zoom out and I'm like, why not? You're an online marketer. You're one of the best. And, and so then I started thinking to myself, oh, there's a disconnect, right? In any business, there's five functions. Alex Sharfin teaches this. It's where I learned it from. There's lead generation. Okay. Yeah. There's lead nurture. There's mm -hmm. conversion, which is now closing the deal, whatever you want to call it. Then there's uh, delivery and fulfillment of your product or service to your new clients. And then there's retention and resell. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's so a lead gen, lead nurture, okay. conversion, delivery, resell. Yes. Right? And if those, if we can agree that that's like almost every business on the planet. Right. Great. So wh where's, where's the biggest problem? So lead gen, let's talk about paid ads for a second. Yes. You can go to any ads agency out there, pay them a bunch of money, or learn ads yourself and collect leads. Great. If those leads aren't the right qualified opportunity and they don't get on your calendar, it doesn't count and you just yeah. wasted money. Right. Yeah. And so, so there was that problem. So, so lead gen, that's like the, the ad agencies of the world, right? Like, and then there's this conversion thing. So Russell comes out and introduces sales funnels. Oh man, what's a sales funnel? Well, you put out uh, you know, a little piece of content that's going to generate the lead and then yeah. it comes to the sales funnel amazing tool and it helps the conversion right it's a sales page it forces people down a pathway where they buy something great it's the shortest distance ever between two points however what did it do it went from lead gen to conversion there was no lead nurture in there at all right zero so this whole movement that russell's created i love it but there's a gap in lead nurture yeah we're the lead nurture guys right because we understood, again, seven to 12 touches. That's what's missing in the whole equation. So we're like, how do we design? And so, so as we had this realization of serving all these high ticket entrepreneurs, we're like, oh my God, like this problem, if we could solve this at scale, we could impact thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of businesses. And so Chris and I said, oh my gosh, we're going to go and build a community around the lost art of sales yeah. and prospecting. Yes. And so that's what we started with. We started with zero. We shed all of our lists, all of our other stuff. And we said, look, we're going to use our own system because we've used it four different times to the 10 million range. We know it works. We've tested it thousands of times with countless different businesses in multiple different industries. We're like, let's just build one for ourselves. So we built our little system for ourselves and put it in place and literally went to six figures in like six weeks. Wow. From zero. Yeah. 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 And so because and it just again it approved it. And and what was really fascinating about that is is we've built our community of you know, our inner circle members of of uh you know that rally around the lost art of prospecting and sales. 
And then we actually speak with every single person that comes into our group, thinks it's important uh, to just learn about their business and how we can best refer them and learn all this other stuff yeah. about them and like how we can really make an impact in their world and That's their life. The lead nurturing, step two. <laughs> yes, 100%. Yeah. And so um, what we're doing now is to, uh, we still have our high ticket agency. Those clients pay us anywhere from 10 to 30 grand a month and uh that's fine for us so as a passion project we are now delivering this really breakthrough um basically lead nurture prospecting system and then um what we found is that once people install this system now anyone that's installed it has had breakthrough success more appointments booked of the right caliber of person more deals closed more everything yeah. like just the and right it's great to say that where i found you was i was googling and i don't remember her name but she was having an issue. I don't remember. It's four letters in her last name. And like it's like, oh gosh, mix or mix or there's X's in her last name. I don't know. She wanted to come up with Marley, Marley Jax? Yes. <laughs> That's it. I, I came across a YouTube video on her and she was talking about how she was struggling and just nothing was working. And then she said, and then I come across these guys, Sean and Chris. Is it? And she was just raving about just like Sean, 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 Googling. That's how I found you. Yeah, I, I love Marley. Marley is uh, obviously she's a part of the inner circle with Russell. Uh, she's been on the Funnel Hacking Live stage. She's been on all stages all over the world. And she's an expert at video marketing. Yeah. When we started, we, 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 and literally like we have this rule of like a friend's rule and a business rule kind of a thing. So like typically what we'll do with people is if they're in that spot and they're a close friend of ours or they're in a network group of us, we'll just sit with them and help them like kind of get clarity, right? A lot of people talk about adding value. Here's a big tip. A lot of people say publish to add value, publish to add value. Like, yeah, publishing is adding value, um, explaining concepts, giving frameworks. That's great value. One of the other things that people forget helping other people find clarity is even more valuable than that. I'm learning that. That's the most, the biggest recent lesson I've gotten is just reaching out and connecting with people. And yeah, that's a, a lot more valuable. Yes. I love blogging. I love creating, but yeah, I'm kind of in my corner and just connecting with people more is really. That's yeah. it. Yep. And, and, and rightfully so. Neve, you're on an amazing path. I've been watching. I've been excited. I've been cheering you on in the background. I've been here to support you in any way I can. And, and likewise, anyone that's in our inner circle family for that reason. So, um, and so with Marley, when, when we, when we encountered her, she was pretty in a, in a bad, it, it wasn't because of a lack of activity, right? Like there's only, we call it the triple threat. There's three A's that we focus on as a sales professional. The first one is you can only control three things in all of everything you do. Your attitude, you can control your attitude, right? You can be totally. happy, you can be mad, sad, whatever. Right? That's kind of my speciality, helping people to control their attitude. It's all about perspective. <laughs> yes, right. So you that's your zone. I don't even touch that zone, right? Like, so you got to show up with the right attitude. And that's your power, your superpower. And I love that about you. And I think you're doing a fantastic job mm -hmm. and you're crushing it, right? The second thing is your activity level. You have the right attitude. Now we need to just make sure that we have the right activity level, focus on the right things. And the third piece is your ability to track. It's like the three A's, right? So it's your attitude, your activity right. level, and your ability, ability to track. To I suck at it. Yeah. Because when you have the ability to track and you know the right thing to track, guess what? Anything we track grows, right? Yes, I know. I, I read it the other day. It doubles apparently. Where did I? Oh, um, I think it was Price Pritchett said it, or was it Bob Proctor? Yeah. yeah track it and it doubles. I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. And so <laughs> with Marley, with, with yeah, exactly. So with Marley, when we started speaking with her. Uh, she totally has the right attitude. She's a dynamo on camera. There's probably almost nobody better on earth, right? Yeah. Um, and then secondly, like she had the activity. She was hammering it. Like she was doing, she's right. solopreneur. She wasn't in the business owner yet. She was solopreneuring out, setting up all of her own stuff, building all of her own yeah, things. Yeah, I like, told her story. She was really working hard. Incredible, yeah. incredible. And she had, um, she had just loads of these opportunities to speak with people. And so we started speaking with her. And what we found was that she was trying to short circuit the nurturing part of her sales process and mm -hmm. trying to close really big dollar deals in a very, very short window of time. And so what we did is we helped her readjust the messaging and the way that she delivered some of the stuff in her sales process to right. match her sales cycle. And what we found is in the next two weeks, she closed almost a hundred grand in deals. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. yeah no, she was, she was like insanely grateful to you guys. So yeah. And now, now she's doing like 200 plus a month. Like her business is cranking. Wow. Like it's amazing. It's a, she got the system in there. It's good. And it, it really is, like you say, the art and the science of learning, learning how to do it. You know, yeah. that's the, 
exciting yeah. thing. When's your book coming out, Sean? You've got to so, know you're, uh, the book. Now you're yeah. an expert in the sales. You got to get one of those books out. Um, I, I, there's some things in the works. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you kind of a heads up on when that gets closer, but it's, uh, it's definitely in the works. It will probably be next year sometime. Awesome. Yeah. So. It's kind of uh, working on a few things like that. So long story short, um, we have this amazing community and I'm so grateful that you're a part of it. I, I think you're, um, I just thank you for showing up the way that you do. One thing oh, that you deliver tremendous value. So, yeah. well, it, but the, the, the beauty about it is, is like, you know, I chose you, you chose me because we connect on a level that makes a lot of sense. Now, of course I did use some sales stuff that I've learned to just make sure that I could connect with you faster and easier. But again, we have this great, connection and i'm grateful yeah but i mean i also i mean it's like we sell four people right it's not uh, i love that we sell four people not two people which i learned from david nagel i don't know if you know david nagel but he's a great mindset i don't i don't, I don't yeah yeah yeah, have to yeah. Look it up too, but yeah so so yeah then that's it like uh and and so now we focus on working with online entrepreneurs that have you know that are either doing the sales themselves or struggling to make sales uh, they don't really potentially have the cash flow to invest into Facebook ads. Uh, they don't have a big enough network to start like a joint venture or a dream 100 strategy. Um, and so literally it's those people that have a proven product and a proven path that have made sales, but they're not making as many sales, or maybe they even have a little sales team uh, that are, uh, you know, doing sales for them, but they're not getting the most out of those people that they could be. Those are kind of like the best fitting people for us. Right. Can, like, by the way, I think it's in your bio, isn't it? If anybody clicks on Sean's profile, you can see your sales ascenders. Yeah. If anyone wants to join. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's just a Facebook group, uh, yeah. sales ascenders. I that from you today. I thought, oh, that's a clever. So I did that as well on my profile. I put, Perfect. Put it right there. <laughs> Keep it simple, right? Like simple is the stuff yeah. that works the it's best. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what else, what else would you like to talk about? Yeah, uh, I don't want to take too much more of your time. This has been awesome. But the, you mentioned the, the pitch and put something to something because I did. Oh, the two inch putt rule. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. Um, I, I will use the exact scenario that you and I use. This can be applied anywhere and everywhere. Again, it's a little tactical, a little practical, but it's good. Yeah. Um, whenever you're serving, I learned this uh, from a guy named Dana Derricks. He is the master of the Dream 100 strategy. If you don't know what that is, um, go learn about it. It's really a powerful strategy. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And uh, the concept that he came out with was this idea of giving people that you want to work with a two inch putt, right? So if you're playing golf and you have like a 50 foot putt versus a two inch putt, which one are you going to like? The two inch putt, right? Because it's easy. You just walk up and knock it in, not even think about it, move forward. Right. So keeping that analogy in our mind, how do we apply that into our world every day? So, for example, when you reach out to me saying, Sean, I would love to have you on uh, on my podcast, on my, my my platform here, which, again, thank you so much. I'm grateful yeah. to be here. Well, um, sure. Yeah. Uh, you said, great, let's set up a time and a day. And I said, well, OK. And, and then there was no real like two inch putt that came my way. What I was hoping right. for. I was like, well, I don't normally on my calendar. There's no evenings in there. So just let me because I don't ever work with clients in the evenings. But yes, now I know I need to set, set well, up. Well, no, it's nothing good about or against you. I'm just sharing. It's like the, the example. The classic, lesson. Right. And so it's it, the lesson is, is like, hey, I want somebody on my podcast or on my show. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a two inch putt for them to say yes and to come on and show up. Yes. So how, how do I do that? Right. So then I say, Hey, listen, I've got some times available. Here's my link. Just click it and make it fit in your calendar and it'll work. That yep. to me is like perfect. And then once I click it, basically on that next page, a perfect scenario would be, I book my time. It goes to the next page. It says, Hey, this is kind of the audience that I have. These are the things I want to talk with you about. And awesome. uh, if there's anything you want to you want to learn, then let me know. Or anything else you want to talk about, let me know. And then that way, I'm like, I already have a preconceived notion of what stories can I pull from my back Rolodex? What 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 frameworks can I share that are going to be the most impactful for your audience? And I can literally just show up with a little bit of brain time, and it's yeah. really simply easy. And so that's a two inch putt there. A two inch. And a two inch putt for a client could be very similar, right? So you have a great selling conversation, you get to the end and they're like, yes, I wanna move forward. Well, if you don't give them any clairvoyance, I call it the clear future in our system, it's called the clear future. Um, and it's literally like, hey, Neve, we're gonna work together based on, because what you said uh, today in our call, so here is the one thing that I need you to complete. How long is it gonna take you to do that? 
So now I've given you a task. So you're focused on one task to do. And I say, great, you think it's gonna take you about two days? Perfect, let's set up the next time to talk or the next move that they're gonna do. Or as soon as you complete this, here's the link that you gotta buy. And if you just right. lead them down that path, that next step, what's the one next thing they gotta take and make it a two inch putt for them? Very good. You will close more deals than you could ever imagine. That makes sense. Yeah, making it easy for people. I love that. I love that. I'll remember that. Thank you so much. That was so much. Yeah. I mean, I could chat with you for hours, but obviously your time is really I, precious and I'm so glad. I'm yeah, well, likewise. Um, you're, you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to break it into clips because there was lots of little nuggets in there and, and share those out. So thank you so much. Thanks for everyone that tuned in live and for replay viewers. And uh, click on Sean's name and you'll be able to join his group too if you want to get more awesomeness from him. And if you're on the fence and working with Neve, let me just share this and take the step, jump over the action threshold, because when you do the intangible benefit of after she sorts you out is going to be so big, you'll never be able to thank her enough. That's what I'll say. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Of course. So, take care. Right. Bye. Bye.